Over the last 250 years, it's been common coin in Western culture that, oh, you can't believe what's said in the Gospels. You know, it's even made into musicals. The things that you're liable to read in the Bible, they ain't necessarily so. And, and that's sort of, that skepticism has wormed its way into much modern culture and indeed into many Christian circles, many church circles, where they'll say, well, Matthew probably made this bit up or Luke just added this bit on the end of the parable or whatever it is. I and others have spent some of the best years of our lives researching what was actually going on in Palestine in the first third of the first century AD and trying to get inside the minds of first century Jews, first century Romans, different Jewish parties and movements, etc., etc. And the more that I have tried to do that, the more I've found that what you find in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John comes up in three dimensions and says, my goodness, this actually belongs. It makes sense, it fits. It gives us very vivid portraits of who these people were and what they were doing. The New Testament Gospels are biographies of Jesus. While the authors do not identify themselves in the text, from very early in the Christian era, the Gospels have been attributed to Matthew, a disciple or follower of Jesus, Mark, a colleague of Peter, also a disciple, Luke, a historian and confidant of the Apostle Paul, and John, a disciple of Jesus. Both Matthew and John were among the 12, Jesus' closest followers and constant companions throughout his ministry. They would have personally observed most of the events they described in their Gospels. Mark and Luke were also contemporaries of Jesus and wrote their biographies based upon information provided by many eyewitnesses. I knew from my years as a legal journalist the importance of eyewitness testimony. In fact, the first question that anybody asks is, how many eyeballs are there? How many eyewitnesses do you actually have? And I needed to determine whether or not contemporary scholars have ascertained whether or not the Gospels are rooted in eyewitness testimony. It's become evident to scholars of the first century that the Gospels were actually attempts to write biographies of Jesus. Now, not in the modern sense, because the Gospels are not particularly interested in his early years. But when it comes to Jesus' adult life and his activities, these are biographies. They're very clearly attempts by eyewitnesses to describe exactly what Jesus said and did. And the consensus of New Testament scholarship has moved in that direction. Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Luke chapter one, verses one and two. Luke's Gospel begins with a prologue. It's actually one of the finest Greek sections in the whole New Testament. Uh, Luke was clearly a literary artist. Uh, but in that prologue, he points out that he has carefully investigated um, the material that he presents in the Gospels, that he's checked with eyewitness accounts, those who are actually present. If you, you read that prologue and you see this is the work of a historian. This was someone who has, has done his research. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Luke chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. You have to understand that people in the first century valued eyewitness testimony. And this is why, from the second century on, it was important to the early church fathers that the people who were alleged to have written the Gospels actually wrote them and that they were eyewitnesses of the things they wrote. We have actually very early attestation of the authorship of the Gospels. The early church father Papias, for example, as recorded by the church historian Eusebius, identifies Mark's Gospel as essentially the eyewitness account of, of Peter. Well, Papias was a disciple of the Apostle John, so we are only one generation removed from Jesus himself. That's a pretty close testimony and strongly suggesting that, in fact, the Gospels are based on eyewitness accounts. Most historians date Jesus' birth between the years 7 and 4 BC, and his death no later than AD 33. Jesus' public ministry began with the choosing of his disciples and lasted approximately three years, culminating in the Passion Week and his trial and death. Scholars generally agree that the Gospel of Mark was written first, 
sometime between the years 60 and 75 in the first century. Matthew and Luke were probably authored shortly after, followed by the Gospel of John. The New Testament Gospels are by far our earliest and most reliable records of Jesus of Nazareth. Um, all of the New Testament Gospels were written in the first century. Not only are they remarkably close to the events themselves, but in fact, eyewitnesses are still around. If they were passing on untruths, if they were not passing on reliable history, then we would expect um, eyewitnesses to say, wait a minute, this isn't what happened. Um, but eyewitnesses are around. Eyewitnesses could confirm what they said. All of the gospel writers either were eyewitnesses or interviewed eyewitnesses uh, to gain the information that they gained about Jesus Christ.